produce a sexy motherfucker. Give me your, give me your, give me your attention, baby. Alright, so mastering mid lane, this is probably what's going to be the hardest to get a grasp on. You kind of have to have a passive aggressive type of playstyle. So even if someone's like chipping you out, like you need to keep your composure, don't get aggressive, just wait it out because in the end, ultimately, you'll come out on top. So this is usually what I do. I allow the enemy to kill two of my minions or one of them in some cases. This allows the next minion wave. It will be closer to my tower. So I'm gonna be plus on that because I don't have to go all the way out there to farm. I can stay safe and close to my tower or even inside my tower in some cases. And then that allows the other mid laner to be out of position. Also, at this point, this is where your passive aggressive is gonna kick in. Uh, depending on who you're playing against, you always want to throw out your abandon pull your drone. And when you do do that, a lot to work for you. It, like when you see them try to attack it, that's when you want to get aggressive. You want to hop on them, hit them with the knockup, hit them with the bomb, make them back off. Because especially with Gideons, because they're gonna, they're, they have to use their dash back. They have to get out of there. They don't want to just take damage and keep taking damage. They're going to use their teleport. They're going to get zapped by it. And then you go back to farming. Um, when you see the buffs come up, just peek in the jungle, see which buff you can get. You don't necessarily have to go all the way down there. Try to see which uh, the opponent enemy jungler, see which buff they like, see which one they prefer, which side they target, and then just don't go over there anymore. That's why I don't run wards um, this early in the match because I lose out on damage sometimes, and I just really don't like that. I like being ahead of the game. And ultimately with your drone, you're going to leave the enemy out of mana and then this is how you bully them because once they run out of mana, they're going to be scared and they're going to stay back and that's when you take over and you push hard. And when you do, you'll notice that you have like a shit ton of minions already in their tower. This is how I take towers in 10 minutes. I've taken towers in 7 I think is my fastest. Right, so I'm gonna go over the build really quickly because that's what a lot of people like to take from these type of videos So I hope this build helps you uh, so you want to start off with your cast tokens Those cast tokens are going to keep you up there with damage in the beginning of the game gadgets Howitzers and Morgeshes, they're going to try to chip you out That's just what they try to do and you want to be able to go and hit them back or poke them back um, Just so they don't bully you in mid uh, which howitzer will try to do a lot and also gadget sometimes but especially morgas that is all she's good for after this most people would say get your wards i do not get my wards first i get my adamant edges and i stock those up with ones this will put you ahead of the damage that any mid laner will have if they go for the wards first it just will um, even after that, depending on how the playstyle is, how the fill of the match is, I might not get my ward. I might stock up uh, uh, my other second adamant edge. But if I see that their Morgesh and their gadget are hitting their abilities, they're getting them off on me, then I will get quenching skills. You do not want to leave your life to chance on tick. Whether or not you will survive if her tick doesn't do that much damage to you. You don't want to give Morgesh the opportunity that she can just kill you off of ticks and she can kill you off of tick ults. You don't want to give it to her you don't want to give gadget the opportunity that if she does land while you're running away if she does land that that sacred pixel on you and her bomb snatches you up really quick and locks on you you really want the quenching scales to save your life it will it save you multiple times and it will save you too but if they're not really hitting their abilities on you or they play passive then load up that second item and edge and at this point, I will get my wards. I will take off that health potion and stock up my ward with that one damage because we're not going to be getting rid of the wards for the rest of the game. These are just in case you don't need, if you need a sub out your ward late game for one of, one of these two, then I will. I use these for early game though. I use Crucial Snare if their jungler is Chimera and he rotates mid a lot because you cannot get away from Chimera, but at least this will give you an opportunity because it slows him down by negative 250 movement speed so that may save your life but you really want to get that ability armor and basic armor from that you also get some damage off of that too which will help you in mid lane <clears throat> but that's just in case you need those that's just in case you get rotated a lot on in mid which does happen in some games so you really want to have uh just a backup you end up getting rid of your cast tokens because you're going to get two staff of the adamants and you just wait throughout the game to load those up at this point, when you have this, you want to be rotating a lot. Every chance you can, you want to rotate until you can get your Hydroverser. And at this point, when you get your Hydroverser, you become aggressive as hell. At this point with the Hydroverser, you are a pure threat on the field. People sleep on her a lot, but she's really one of the best mid laners in my opinion. After that, 
you pretty much take off your adamant edges and you fill the rest of your staff adamants. Um, you get raw 300 damage. With the Hydroversa, you're going to do times 0 0.07 of your max mana. Damage at max mana is going to be 398 or 399 if you round it. Plus, what Bellica's already damaged that she already does. So you, you're hitting over 400. All it comes down to is positioning. Um, if you position yourself accordingly, then you won't get targeted as much. All right, guys. So I got a couple stream clips of my playstyle before. Um, just so you guys can see, like, my playstyle is still the same. I have, like, this fucking demeanor. Excuse my French. I just really do not care whether or not I live or die. You, you, if you're playing Bellica, you take no shit from nobody. You give people abilities, respect. You don't play stupid around, like, with, you know, people's, the mashups and stuff. But you don't take shit from anybody. Okay? And... If you play like this, if you go in, you rush in, you do everything you can, you get all the abilities out, you back up, you reset, you do the same thing again, you are going to get kills. You should not worry about getting kills. Uh, that should not be your goal. Your goal is to play like a support. You want to support your teammates. You want to help your teammates out. You want to hit them with the knockups. You want to get the stuns off on them. You play as a support, you are going to get kills regardless. It does not matter. Like, she's just not a regular support because she does a shit ton of damage. But you also get almost like that safe feeling and you reassure your teammates that, like, they can count on you. you can, they can trust you. And what that's going to do is allow your teammates, when they see you go in, they're going to go in with everything they got because they can trust you. They know you're going to go in there. You're going to do what you have to do. You're going to get all your abilities out. You're going to stun whatever the case may be. You're going to ult who needs to be ult. You're going to prioritize who needs to be prioritized. And you're going to get shit done. And so you're going to play aggressive. The rest of your team's going to play aggressive because what usually happens is that people look at each other. They have like this standoff. And what that allows is just the enemy team to regroup themselves. They fucking reevaluate the situation. You got some other people rotating on you. You just never know what's about to happen. And you don't want to give them the opportunity. When you see that, when you see something, you crash on it, you take it. What happens, happens. You're playing like a support. If you die, you die. At least the rest of your teammates got to get away. You did everything you could. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to slap a like on it. Um, and comment if you want to see me do guides on any other characters. Or uh, if you want some builds. Um, or even if you want to discuss how I play. Uh, I'm always open to other people's opinions and what I can do to better myself as a player. So uh, you can reach to me out in the comment section. I have my Twitter link in the description. And I also have a Discord chat if you want to join that. It's pretty anime as fuck, but hey, if you want to join, just join.